Today we're going to talk about fluid machines, which is uh, chapter 5 of your book. And that comprises a few separate things, okay? We talk, we're going to talk first of all about pump characteristics, okay? Um, all of these systems, fluid machine systems, will have a pump in the, somewhere in the pipeline, okay? And we're going to talk about how a pump, how the pressure rise of a pump is created and how that relates to the flow rate, okay? We'll talk about the pipe characteristics, okay? Um, which is the, essentially the pipeline, okay? And, uh, and by matching the pump characteristics and the pipeline characteristics together, we can then work out what the flow rate of a system would be, what its operating point is. So we match those two things up, and that allows us to determine the operating point and determine the flow rate of a system. We'll talk a little bit about efficiency and how that relates to flow rate. And then we're going to run through an example, which is on page 38 in your books. So this, uh, this lecture is all about an example. You take an example system, okay, and you have a pump in the system. And by knowing what, how the pipe is performing and how the pump is performing, we can match those two together to determine how the system will operate, okay? So let's look at a... You know, what is a fluid machine? Well, it's either a system that takes energy from the flow. Okay, so an example would be a turbine or a hydraulic motor or a hydraulic actuator. These are all examples of systems that take energy from a flow. Okay, a hydraulic motor is essentially a, a pump but in reverse. Okay, you apply flow to that hydraulic motor and the motor will turn. And depending on how much load is on the motor, you'll, you'll, it'll be a taking pressure out of the system. Hydraulic actuator, you've all seen on a digger or a crane or something. It's one of that great big long piston thing that uh, will raise or lower an arm. And a turbine, wind turbine is an obvious example. Uh, at the back of a gas turbine engine, a jet engine, you have a turbine. And there's, that's an example of a, motor, of a pump. Okay. The other type of fluid machine is something that uh, gives energy to the flow, okay? And ob the obvious example of that is a pump or a compressor, okay? That's a, this is a pump. That's an internal gear pump from an o or, um, automatic transmission system. And then this picture here is actually a turbine. I should have put the pictures in the other way around, but that's a turbine and that's an internal gear pump. There are various different types of turbines and gear pumps. These are just some pictures to, um, to give you an example. So, how do we characterize a pump? Okay, well, essentially what we do is the characteristic is going to be the relationship between the pressure rise, okay, which we call delta PP, you recognize that from Bernoulli's equation, against the flow rate, which is, we know is V dot, okay, volumetric flow rate. And the simplest sort of character, characterization we can do is we can just assume that the pressure rise is constant, which, <coughs> which is always assumed throughout this course up until now. Okay, and that's basically that the pressure rise is constant irrespective of the flow rate. Okay, we just assume that the pump supplies X amount of pressure. Okay, it doesn't matter what the flow rate is doing. The thing is, this isn't very realistic. Okay, we know that delta P times V dot is the power. Okay, well, look what happens here. Basically, the power at this point is the same as the power at this point, which is the same as the power at the complete other end. So, essentially, this number becomes infinity which is completely unrealistic. We know that, okay? And so that's, that's not realistic, and we will stop using that from now on. Okay, well, what's the alternative then? Well, we know that efficiency, okay, we talked about efficiency before, and we know that efficiency um, is the um, output power divided by the input power, okay? So power to the flow divided by the power consumption. And we know that the power to the flow is delta P times V dot, okay? So we can replace power to the flow with this, and I've replaced power consumption with big P, okay? Now, if we assume that, uh, that um, the power is constant and the efficiency is constant, then we've got a relationship where delta PP is some constant over V dot, okay? Some constant over V dot, and from your mathematics, we should know that what, what something where 1 over a, a number is, okay? 
And that's a graph that looks a little bit like that. Okay, this, we get this sort of characteristic. So at very low flow rates, we've got a very high pressure drive, pressure. Okay, and as the flow rate increases, the pressure um, rise approaches zero. Okay, and we're assuming that efficiency is constant. Okay, so it doesn't matter what the flow rate is, again, the efficiency is constant. Now, although this is a somewhat better representation of the pump characteristic, this is also unrealistic because the efficiency is not normally constant, okay? And because essentially pumps and motors and turbines will be operated, will be optimized for a particular um, flow rate. And what I mean by optimization is the efficiency will be a maximum of that specific flow rate, okay? Outside of that specific flow rate, okay, you're going to get inefficiencies. And so this number, that is not valid, okay? So, what we actually find out, okay, is the pump characteristic, by varying the power input, okay, and taking measurements, you get a pump characteristic that looks a bit like this, okay? So, what happens is, is you have the fl high flow rate, okay, sorry, high pressure drop. That's generally related to a low flow rate, okay? So, that's more or less valid. And then at a high flow rate, you have a low pressure drop or low pressure rise, okay? And these lines are for increasing values rotational speed of the pump, okay? And so if we have a pump that's operating at a constant speed, it'll follow this line, okay? Depending on the pressure rise required, you'll have a high, low flow rate or a high flow rate, okay? So that's the, basically the operation of that. And then these are the corresponding efficiency curves. And so it's, uh, you know, this omega-1 here, this one here, that will relate to this efficiency curve. And you can see at this point here, there's a peak efficiency. So the idea would be for your pump to be optimized so that the pressure rise required matches where the peak efficiency is, okay? So that's going to be a pressure rise and a flow rate that matches that peak efficiency. For omega-3 up here, okay, obviously the pressure, the optimizer, optimal point is this point here, okay? That N max line should actually be on top of this, uh, those lines there. It shouldn't be up there. Okay, I'm not quite sure why that's there. But anyway, so that's, essentially, this is the characteristic of a pump. Now, what does that, what's the equation that matches that line? Well, pump characteristic, this is a, a zoomed-in version of the graph that you can see. The pump characteristic, this line here, okay, is actually half of a negative parabola, okay? You have a, 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 a squared term in there, Okay, and obviously, if this was y and this was x, then to get a negative probably, you must have a negative x squared term. Okay, well, in, in this equation, we're going to have a negative v squared term. And the equation looks like this. It's some constant a1, okay, which is actually the, uh, the y-intercept, okay, if you imagine. Imagine this is, uh, we're back in GCSE maths, okay. You're looking at quadratic equations. Well, the a1 is going to be your y-intercept, okay, so that's this delta pp at zero flow rate, okay? And A2 relates to how stretched out this uh, parabola in V squared is, okay? Or V dot squared is. And so this is the equation for a pump characteristic, okay? It's very important that you remember this form of the equation. Often in the problems, you'll get an equation that will be given to you, and it'll be in some form like this, okay? And, and so you can work out what A1 and A2 are. So this is, a, this is what we call the pump characteristic, and it's uh, the first part of this section. I'll just go to it. So that's the pump characteristic. And it relates to the relationship between the flow rate, okay, and the pressure rise that the pump can create. 